GWS are now lobbying AFL to relocate them to Cardinia Park. They've won three of their last three games there. Ten clubs have not won in Geelong in the last 15 years. What does GWS know that they don't? Welcome to AFL from LA. I'm your host, Cindy. I'm here in front of Prospect Studios. Fun fact, they used to shoot General Hospital here. Carlton's promising start to the season has faded faster than a politician's promise. They had 60 inside 50s for only six goals. That's as efficient as, well, Carlton in round one, two, three, six, nine, and ten. Kerno and Mackay combined for one six. Charlie started strong, playing higher up the ground and taking some great Marks. But Harry, whew, he looked lost. Kind of like a vegan at a steakhouse. Since his new contract, his accuracy is only at 34%. Pre-contract, he was kicking at 52%. Does Harry have a fetish for behinds? Cripps had only 19 touches. Well, Sydney's Chad Warner had 29 and two goals. But it wasn't all doom and gloom for the Blues. Walsh had 31 disposals and eight inside 50s. And Jacob Wiedering kept Buddy goalless. Full credit to Sydney, though. They stood up when it counted most. Led by Warner, Golden, and Nick Blakey. Man, he was zipping down the field like a teenager who was just given the keys to their father's car. Once again, the heat's coming from Michael Voss. But hey, it took Ted Lasso three years. And if you're enjoying the show, I know you are. Like and subscribe. It really helps more Aussies get to see the show. Luke Action Jackson. Melbourne must have felt like they were seeing their ex at a party with someone new and realizing that they were hotter than ever. Even more impressive was the fact that after Sean Darcy did his hamstring, Jackson was forced to take on Gone and Grundy on his own. And he beat them both. That's right. He beat Grundy and Gone on his own. Frio's forward line is looking really promising. Tracy is growing every week. Keanu, I mean Banfield, is really stepping up. And Jai Amos, is this guy the Pavlich replacement that Frio's been looking for? Frio have delivered once again on the big stage, taking a top four scalp at the G and proving they are finals contenders. Is GMHBA Stadium now GWS GM? be Greater Western Sydney without Sam Taylor, Josh Kelly, Harry Himmelberg, and Nick Kane. Beat Geelong in Geelong. Superstar and hottie of the week. Hottie of every week, really. Toby Green played his 200th game. There was no way these guys were going to lose on his 200th game. That signals to me respect for their captain. And as a captain and a leader, you either have it or you don't. And Toby Green has it. Man, not only did the Giants withstand the Cats' last quarter fight back, they kept going. Adam Kingsley just told them to just play like their lives depended on it and they never stopped fighting and they never stopped trying to score. Whitfield, Green, and Ward were all awesome as were Daniels, Riccardi, and Hogan. And let's not forget Iden down back. And what about Briggs and The Rock? The plus side for Geelong was the debut of Irishman Mullen. There were four Irishmen out on an AFL field. The last time four Irishmen played on an AFL field it was a U2 concert. Pissed off by all the attention Darcy Moore received last week, James Sicily decided to one-up him and play perhaps the best game of his career. Sicily had 15 disposals in the last quarter alone and a one-game suspension for belting Caminiti. Is James Sicily the new Darcy Moore? Will Darcy Moore respond by getting 50 disposals next week? The Hawks outplayed the Saints for three quarters. The way they move the ball does not reflect a team sitting at 16th on the ladder. If this is tanking, then Sam Mitchell is doing a terrible job. Adam Simpson, on the other hand, He's doing just fine. Harley Reid, anyone? Is South Australian football now the most watchable in the competition? With Shelly, Rankin, Rosie, Horn Francis, Butters. I am just loving it. Rankin was amazing. 23 disposals, 16 contested, and two goals. Adelaide's law firm of Dawson, Keys, and Laird smashed Brisbane's midfield. And Rory Laird laid 16 tackles. Who does this guy think he is? Matty Rao? And Keys managed to tag Lockie Neal out of the game in the first half. What was crazy was the Crows' efficiency. They kicked 14-11 from just 47 inside 50s. Brisbane, on the other hand, looked like they had Kerno and Mackay in their forward line. I'm not sure if Brisbane can go all the way this year. They've got the talent, but they clearly have an aversion to winning anywhere outside of the Gabba. And Joe Danaher, he's the most hot and cold player out there. The Crows, on the other hand, they responded to a bad loss to the Bulldogs. They've got the top-end talent and the grunt in the middle to go places this September. Look out.